Hi guys, I'm Ryan Newsman and welcome to my flight hunting channel. If you haven't already done so, consider hitting the subscribe button down below. Uh, that'll keep you up to date with everything as I upload it. Uh, my channel already contains hundreds of videos covering a wide range of both patterns and techniques from the basic to the more advanced. Uh, so without delay, let's get on with the show. Hi everybody. So tonight what we're going to do is tie a... It's a salmon fly, but it's I suppose in the line of bombers. It's an Adam's irresistible salmon fly. So we have here a size eight partridge CS2 or CS42, sorry, bomber hook. And I'm going to use uh, a black 60 thread. So tie our thread on. Take it down to this level with the point, and then the body here. I'm going or the shank. Sorry, I'm going to varnish that. And my thinking behind that is that I find that deer hair destroys hooks. I'm not sure why. Whether it's the oils in it or whether it's it absorbing water or whatever it does, but I find that it, it destroys them. So, the tail on this fly, I'm going to use uh, the natural bit of a white bucktail, so the, the natural back bit here, the brown bit. I'm going to take a bunch of that. I'm going to pull out some of the useless. Short bits, and then I'm going to put it into a hair stacker. And that'll line up the tips for me. So I take that out. Hopefully, we'll have a nice square tail. So, I'm going to mount that up on top there, put on a couple of turns, and check it for length. That's a, that'll be a personal preference to yourself, but uh, I suppose you could use anything up to the length of the body. And I'm going to wrap forward on that sort of an open turns, and then at the front here, I'm going to trim that. I've lifted it up and I'm trimming it backwards, and what that'll do is give me a little bit of a taper in the cutoff. And next what I want to do is to take my thin clear varnish and I just want to run that onto that before I tie over it. And then we'll tie back through that varnish. I'm holding a bunch tight and up a little bit. And so whenever I tie that in then, it'll keep it on top of the shank. And hopefully the varnish will set all in, stop it from rusting a little bit and stop it hopefully from spinning. So, next we're going to do the body, which is spun deer hair. I'm just using a natural deer hair for this. And this is a sort of slow time consuming process. Give it a bit of a flick or a blow and that'll get rid of the uh, the under fur. Set that up, put on a couple of turns and start to tighten it down and then at the end allow it to rotate and then wind into it. Pull all that back and get our tying thread in front of it. And then you just repeat this process as we go along 
the body. So take a bunch, get rid of the fluff, set another bunch up in tight to the back of it, get a turn on it and then start to wrap in. You could use some sort of a tool or a tube to help stack this back if you want. And we'll advance forward. Until we get up to around about where we uh, finished the uh, tie-in of the tail. Takes a little bit of getting used to, but... Eventually you should be able to make nice smooth even bodies. See each time I'm sort of holding the previous turns of it back to allow the new bunch on in front. And I think we'll make this one the last bunch. Pull back, pinch all in place. One. Two loose wraps, start to tighten it and it'll spin and wrap all through that and that'll secure it down. We'll take our tying thread in front. And I'm just going to finish that off and snap it off so that we can trim the, uh, the deer hair body. So a little bit of super glue just onto that. So that it doesn't slip. And it's time to trim up our body. So what we want is like a cigar type shape, but the shape itself I suppose is up to your own preference. So I'm going to use here a hairdress and scissors to take it down. I'm going to just rotate the fly round. Rather than trying to do it all in one go, just take it off in increments. You notice that I left the tail portion, the first one that I wrapped on quite long, longer than my actual tail, so it makes it easier to separate it out from the tail itself. there on shape. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold my tail and get my sharp little scissors in underneath those back fibers to make a nice clean rear cut to it. 
And then I'm going to use the curve of these. Just for the final shaping. So that is our tail and body tied. Uh, so what we'll do next is we'll put our thread back on and then we're going to put on the wings and the hackles. So if we were tying this much closer up to you know, a longer body section I'd have already tied those in. Um, but as we have the room here we'll do it this way. So. Uh, for this one we have two hackles, so we have a grizzle hackle and a brown hackle mixed. And then we have two grizzle hackle points as wings. So I'm going to tie in a grizzle hackle and a brown hackle here. And I'm going to tie them in pointing forwards. Leave them sticking out the front. Now we take two grizzly, I suppose they're like little hen or saddly soft type hackles. I'm pinching the two together and then I'm pinching off the excess bits. Now that will give me two identical tips then whenever I separate this out because I held them in place and stripped them off to the same point. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip them around because they have a curve to them. I'm going to flip them around so they're back to back. Again match them up for length. And you can see that'll give me a little bit of a splay. Hold that on top. Hopefully they'll sit for me. Should do. Tie them in now. I'm only tying this on the back, sort of a couple of mil, I guess. And then we'll cut off those hackle stocks. Pull back. Our wings and then I'm just going to put a couple of turns in in front of them to get them sticking up straight and then I'm going to take them apart a little bit and sort of figure it between them just to splay them out. So next I'm going to take my tying thread back to where the body ended and I'm going to wrap my two hackles. Now, you might have seen a lot of people ha wrapping hackles forwards in a dry fly style. I'm going to wrap these backwards. So I take my hackle and start to wind it at the front. I'm just going to hold these two um, wings out of the way. And wrap backwards when I get to the wings I'm gonna pass in behind them continue to wrap leave that there it'll hang under its own weight on the bobbin and then I'm gonna take the brown one and the same thing I'm going to wrap back through 
the second one. This will give me that sort of Adams mix. And behind the wings. Right back. And now I have these two hackles here held by the hackle pliers. I'm just going to take them out behind here. And I'm going to take my thread and do several turns just at that junction between the uh, body and the hackle. And that'll tie down those hackles. And I just trim them in tight. And then I'm just going to wiggle wind my thread up through the hackles get to the two little wings I'm just going to hold them back out of the road and then continue to wiggle wrap through that now reasoning behind that is that as I was wrapping my uh, hackles backwards so they were traveling the hackle stocks were essentially traveling this this is accentuated but at this angle as they went back so all of those hackle wraps are spiraling backwards with this angle then my tying thread is traveling forward at this angle so it's actually binding down every turn of hackle rather than just wrapping a hackle and tying it in at the front so now what i do is i'll just take all of those all the hackle just stroke it back and take my tying thread in front of it here and just create myself a neat little head That'll just control any fibres that were sort of sticking out to where we didn't want them to be. And then we whip finish, or as I do, hand finish. And I always generally put on two finishes in case one gives. Trim that off. And then a little touch of varnish or super glue. I'm going to use a little bit of super glue here to varnish the head. Make sure not to fill the eye. And then just pull the hackle out sideways. So that is our fly tie. You can see we have our splayed feather tip wing on top here. And that is our Adams irresistible salmon sized dry fly. So, hopefully you like what you see, like some of the tips, if you do, give us a like, subscribe, tell your friends, check out the other videos that I have in my playlists, there are hundreds there covering all manner of different styles and techniques, uh, and until next time, tight lines, and thanks for watching.